Hey guys, so today I'm gonna talk about foils. I really wanna focus on foils because I do feel like they are, a lot of the foil prices are unknown. And I blame, I've been playing Magic for a long time and even I am surprised at some of these prices. They make sense, but at the same time, the multiplier is huge in it. So Blade of the Six Pride, this one is from Future Sight. There was a bunch of these. I think there was a ghoul and a ba like a barbarian of some type. But this one is very interesting because it is a cat. So 17 cents on average for the non-foil and over $8, almost eight fifty for the foil. So the multiplier, of course, is due to cats, the cat deck wanting it. But at the same time, the normal version is only 17 cents. So it's not like... The cat deck has no other options. Next, Arcane Laboratory from 7th edition. It is worth almost $11 as a foil and under $1 as a non-foil. 7th edition foils, they're kind of this legendary foil, even the lands. I mean, pretty much anything in 7th edition, Urza's Legacy, as we're going to see a little later, is worth some money in foil. So when you're Looking into older collections, and I will go out hunting. I will go out hunting, I promise, for these cards. Because it's now more interesting. Previously, it was not interesting because you go hunting and there's nothing to hunt because none of the cards were worth any money. But previously, these cards that are not worth money, like if you played during 7th edition and you had a foil copy of this, I doubt you would figure out today it's $10 unless you've been playing more recently. So, yeah, and some of these are just insanely valuable. So this one has spiked, and the foil is $21. It is from Betrayers, a not the best set. And if you played during Betrayers, it's not like this was a chase card, or a chase foil at one time. But now with the legendary role being different, this gets a little bit better. I don't know, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the foils and the old cards. So there's two things I can see people making money from or having wanting a lot of that I want to accumulate. I want to accumulate a lot of old bulk. Arabian Nights, Unlimited, maybe even Revised depending on the cards. And definitely Alpha Beta, just they make a lot of sense. Legends or Antiquities. Uh, the list goes on and on. Even the dark would be like okay now because there's some cards in the dark worth more than ten dollars. Uh, that's not called Maze of If, but foils is completely insane. So dark depths is almost a two hundred dollar foil. It's a good card regular, but a two hundred dollar foil could someone play in Code Snap ever figured this was it? No, if they quit during Code Snap, there's no way they would figure this is over a dollar as a foil. Because the card that really, the two cards, Vampire Hex Mage that exploded the card, and then the Vespian stage, that's the other one that has the combo. But no, no, you would not figure out, it would be very difficult for you to figure out that this card is $200 as a foil, having played during Code Snap when it was pennies. Just pennies, right? And even the foil probably was like maybe a dollar or two. Magic has changed a lot, and when you look at these expensive foils, you have to, what you have to assume is, they're still out there. Like a foil, foil. This was a terribly un, terribly, no value set. This set outside of the most valuable card, I believe, is still a common Ristic study, but the foil of a foil is forty five bucks, which is insane. I mean, it is um, incredible. It is quite incredible that this card, which I've seen it in foil, but I honestly could not have imagined it being this price today. 45 bucks, it makes sense. It's good in EDH. It's kind of force of will, but not as good because you got to discard an island and something else. I mean, it does cost one less than force of will if you wanted to hard cast it. But at the same time, it costs two cards versus one card. You don't lose the life, but the life is the one life. Not as relevant. 45 buck foil. Wow. 
Uh, even more recently, uh, some of these cards, just the multiplier doesn't, a typical multiplier is two times for a foil. If it's a really good foil, maybe it is four times. This one looks like it is five times, so it's a little bit more than five times. Makes sense. Uh, I believe this card was reprinted in one of the commander sets, correct me if I'm wrong, but the foil has not seen a reprint. And that's crazy, right? The craziness of this is when you look at the card and you're playing it in a strat and you're like, hmm, I have a foil copy of it. You would trade it away for probably peanuts, right? Peanuts. And now it's no longer a peanut. So there is opportunity, but the opportunity is no longer in the standard strong cards or even the modern strong cards. It's in the ED8. And more, more specifically, it's in the foils. Okay, what if I told you there's a foil uncommon that is a buck or less? It's less than a dollar. It's from Urza Legacy, but the foil copy is $95. There is. That's why this is so... People understand non-foil prices a lot better than foil prices, especially if you quit Magic. If you quit Magic... I'm assuming that if you're selling your Magic collection, you haven't played it for a few years, and you don't know what's actually in it. If you were able to find this, that's very good. It would make up whatever the collection you're buying, it would inst this one foil will make the entire collection back and then some. And it's good. Uh, it's very, very good. So I'm kind of eager to go hunting to for foils, to go hunting for old cards uh, because there's no downside, right? You pay $100 and all you do have to do is find one of these you're you're good to go. Out of a hundred dollars, you're looking at probably twenty thousand card collection, maybe a ten thousand card collection, and you just got hit on one of these big ones. The multiplier in Urza Legacy is insane. Like you saw a multiplier from one to what was that? Almost a hundred ninety five. One to ninety five. This is kind of the same actually. It's thirty five to twelve. So the regular card's thirty five cents. Unless they've been playing Magic recently, or even if they're playing Magic recently, if I showed you a 35 cent card and asked you how much you thought the foil was, maybe you say a dollar or two, no way you get to $12. And that's a huge multiplier. So the perceived value of a dollar and the actual value of $12. Like I, if you ask me, okay, how much is this in foil? I'd probably say $4 at most, but for it to be 12, there is a gap in understanding of how much these foils, old foils are. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.